Today, we're gonna to talk about removing a charge off off of your credit reports. This is probably one of the most difficult tasks that we go through as a credit repair company and that you'll probably go through um, as an individual trying to remove a charge off off of your credit reports. Let me tell you the reason why. is because when you're looking at a charge off, that is an account that you had that went into a, a bad standing because you did not keep up with the payments. It ended up having no payments for six months, which is what is required for a charge off. And then the account is closed and the original creditor is either going to try to collect on that debt or they're going to try to sell it off to a debt collection company. In this uh, uh, video, we're going to talk about what happens we're going to we're going to look at a few ways that you can have that charge off removed even if it's still with the original creditor but most of you that are watching this video are probably going to fall into the category where that original creditor sold that debt off to a debt collector and i'm going to show you a strategy to get that removed so first let's just make it clear that a charged off account does not mean that the debt has went away it's just an accounting entry that takes it off of the performing books and is put on to the non-performing books. So first, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about the foundation. We're going to build that foundation, that framing of what an actual account is. An account is way more than just the amount that you owe on the account and the account number. There is a whole bunch of things that can be challenged to uh, make sure that the information is being reported accurately on your credit reports. And that's what this whole thing is about. There's a lot of confusion out there, even from the uh, people who are in charge of the uh, credit reporting, like TransUnion and Equifax Experian. They make people focus only on what they did with the account as a whole. Even though the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act allows you, us, all of us, even them, because their, their information is being maintained by bureaus also, that all of the information has to be accurate. And when it, they use that word broadly, all information has to be accurate, but they, but they give people the impression to only focus on maybe the account number, the company who placed information on there and the amount when there's a whole bunch of other things that could be looked at and challenged and that is where you're actually initiating your rights to have 100 percent of the information on your credit reports 100 percent accurate we all have that right and that's what this video is about so please like this video because that'll help more people be able to get help. And I promise you, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get this job done and what to look for on your credit reports. And before I get started, if you don't have your complete credit reports, um, I know that you wanna get these free reports and that's all well and good, but having the free credit reports is like having uh, gas that is not premium. You're going to get to where you want to be, but it's not going to be optimal fuel to get you where you want to be. And now for a car, that might be one thing. But when it comes to you and your credit, because you're judged by your credit reports and by the information on your credit reports, I think that you would want to have all of the information. So if you need to get your complete credit reports, go to the website, your the number three scores dot com your the number three scores.com grab those credit reports and then you'll be and then you're going to be checking what i'm telling you to check here and then again if you are just too busy you want to have someone do this for you if you go grab those reports we will review those reports with you and let you know what can and cannot be done and what we see and how we can uh knock off those charge-offs for you but don't worry about that just get those reports if you already have them grab them pause this video and then we're going to go through line by line what you need to look out for so you can put together a dispute letter to be able to get that charge off totally removed and don't worry 
Even if it was sold to a debt collector, I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. And even if it wasn't sold to a debt collector and they're still maintaining it, I'm gonna show you how to deal with that also. So first, what you need to understand, and this is the foundation of the information on your reports, what they don't want you to pay attention to is there are these lines on your, on your uh, credit reports. Now, these here is the portfolio type. Now, the portfolio type is it going to be as an installment loan, mortgage, revolving, open line. And there's other codes that are within the portfolio type. There's other codes that are in there. But mainly most, most of you are going to be somewhere in here. So you need to check to make sure that this is correct on your line. Now, you might be saying, well, how could it be inaccurate on there if they place it on there? Believe it or not. All the three credit reporting agencies are totally independent. And I've seen a whole bunch of reports and you will probably look at your reports right now and you will see that something is different about that first line with that portfolio type that is different from the three. That right there shows inaccuracy because just to, to let you know more about how credit reporting works is that there is one rule on how the information must be placed on your credit reports, but it's coming from different channels and people always wonder, well, how could one bureau have it wrong and another bureau have it right? Or can how can all three of them have different things that are wrong on my credit reports? If it's all coming in and it's because they're totally independent and these are how mistakes are made. So you wanna check the portfolio type and then you wanna look at the account type. Now there's a whole bunch of different codes for the account type, but I just picked some of them right here. You got education, and that's a code 12. You got home improvement, like if you had a home improvement loan, that's a 04, real estate is, is a 26. Now I am gonna make more videos about these here, about how you can use these codes to make sure, to make sure that they have the right code for the account that they have listed on your credit report. Some of the times, they don't even put those codes in there properly. So now let's go to some more lines. And th this is actually what is on your credit reports. A lot of people, now that, that I've made you aware of this, you're probably noticing, hey, this has all this, this stuff on there. The next thing is the credit line, what type of uh, credit, credit line it is. The uh, next thing you want to pay attention to is the highest credit and the original loan amount. When I've looked at credit card companies, this is one of the number one things when, you, when, when I have uh, clients that have had charged off accounts, is that this here is one of the most inaccurate data points that I see on there because you can actually challenge based off of your agreement that you had with them that you never had a certain credit uh, a certain credit limit with them that it's all based on fees that they put on there after the charge off so that is something that you can actually challenge with them and we'll get into that in a minute the terms duration you can look at what is it showing for the terms of the loan now you might be saying well they're gonna have that accurately placed on there. If I got an auto loan and it was for, uh, you know, for 36 months, that that information is going to be on there. Or maybe you're not even seeing that information on there because the, the type of credit reports that you're looking at is not even stating that all of that information on there. That's why it's very important to get all of the data. Because if you're trying to f fix your credit, it's important that you have all of the data so you will know how you will be able to challenge the inaccuracy. See, we're not talking about running from information on your credit reports. We're talking about making sure that the information on your credit reports is 100% accurate and you always have that right. The next thing is to schedule monthly payments. You're gonna look at what they have on there. Are your monthly payments 
even being reported properly on those on those accounts look at your past credit reports if you have a monitoring service and you can see if it was being reported accurately before it went into a charge off status maybe it'll be on there maybe it won't but that is something that you can actually challenge to get those documents to make sure that it's a hundred percent accurate and then the account status is it open is it closed what's going on with that account the current balance and what i talked about again right here that current balance could be one of the ways that you could utilize that information to show that they're reporting that information inaccurate which is all that you're looking for is the inaccuracies on your credit reports and then they have a code actually for e coa which is an authorized user on if you were an authorized user on the account i put that in there because we've actually had individuals who had authorized they were on someone else's uh, account as an authorized user and that account ended up going bad and so what we tell them to do is you want to get that information totally removed off of your credit reports because if that person did not handle their card right, it's gonna bring your credit scores down. It's gonna make it look like you went bad on that account. So you're gonna to wanna to look look at that to see that code and then you can use that code to actually get that information taken off of your credit reports because you're gonna you're gonna uh, dispute to them that you were just an authorized user and that you did not make the mistakes on that card, that that individual made the mistakes. Now you might have to get uh the information from them to show and they do break this down with authorized user accounts is that you can show what was charged with your card and you can show what was charged with the individual and they always state the credit card companies always state that the the uh, original trade line owner the the uh person who owns the account is responsible for all of the cards on the account not to say that if you use the card that you shouldn't pay your portion uh unless it was for the business and then you just had authorized use of the card but if that individual went bad on that card it does it should not map over to you uh because you could show that what charges you were responsible for and you could just have that information totally removed off your credit reports I just wanted to throw that in because I've seen that happen and that's like one of the, the worst things that could happen with, with people is they get on get get on get added on to, uh, someone's account as an authorized user just to try to get their score boosted up and then that person messes up on their card and ends up uh, defeating the purpose of what they tried to do with getting that AU trade line placed on there. Okay, let's talk about removing that charge off. Again, to review, just because an account was charged off, that is just simply an accounting entry. It does not mean that the debt goes away. None of that stuff. Like, you know, it just means that it's an accounting in entry. It's off of the performing accounts and put on the non-performing accounts. It could take a few paths. Uh, once that happens, they could sell it to a portfolio company which is going to be you that's going to be your ammunition to be able to use to be able to get that information removed from the original creditor off of your credit reports and then you'll deal with the debt collection company when they do send you that letter and i'm going to give you a letter to deal with them if they try to come after you but first if the original creditor is going to maintain the account or if they're going to sell the account these are your options so you got to keep in mind all what I want you to focus on. And uh, let's talk about it first from the, uh, the uh, uh, original creditor keeping the debt. Because a lot of people, they, they don't think that something would be able to happen if the original creditor kept the debt. Uh, they're like, hey, they got everything. Getting it off your credit reports, that is something that can happen. Dealing with the debt, that's something that you're going to have to be prepared to deal with if they maintain the debt because they can try to sue you. They're going to have all of the information to prove it that way. They're going to have your signatures or, you know, unless something went wrong with the account that you can prove, it's going to most likely end up in a settlement situation. But again, when we're talking about reporting on your credit reports, it has to be 100% accurate. And we just walked through the things that I want you to look for 
when it's when you're dealing with that original creditor you could show them with their own documents that you never was 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 authorized a certain amount of high credit and you could say that this is totally inaccurate because you've just blown this up with fees that you did not actually give me that high credit limit see th this is all all of this stuff is like language plays on words things that they don't want you to pay attention to because if the account goes bad more than likely people aren't going to it's just going to sit there until the person is ready to do something about it well now you're ready to do something about it and now you're going to start looking at each of those lines on there so if it's with the original creditor if it's with the original creditor, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at each one of those lines and you're gonna challenge everything based off of what you remember with your account. If you can get your original contract, that will even make it better because then, or one of your past statements with them, and you can look at that information and they, they're gonna have fees on there. If you haven't paid payments for six months, you better bet that it's b ballooned up with fee after fee after fee. But that's going to be your, your, the door opening, your key to the door, opening it up to be able to challenge them because the way they put that on there and the way it's stated, and you can look at this for yourself, is going to say high credit limit. High credit limit. And this is something that hurts you with your credit. So in a way, they're, they're uh, putting information on there that is not true because you did not have that credit limit. But another thing that comes to my mind that we've utilized with our company is that there, there is, a, in the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, you do not, they cannot put anything on there that unfairly represents you. So they're stating that you had, let's just say a $10,000 credit card. They're saying that the high credit limit is $13,000. When they put that on there as $13,000 and, and they stated on there also in another section that your credit limit is $10,000, that right there, that just that information right there makes your credit score go down because they're misleading. They did not give you the extra $3,000. The extra $3,000 are fees that built up over time during that six-month process. So they're actually reporting that inaccurate and they're unfairly representing you with that account by saying that you had a $13,000 line of credit and that you used $13,000, but it was really just fees. So right there you have them, but you gotta craft your dispute based off of what you see with the information. So right now what you're doing, you better be doing this and like this video if you haven't done this yet, is you're writing down and you're gonna watch this video over and over and over again. I know some of the times I might say it a certain way and that's because we do this every day and sometimes I might make it sound easier than it is, but you're gonna have to just comb through and you comb through it again and you will see, you will start to see and be like, okay, I see this. The second time I read it, Steve said it, uh, I see it this time. That's just how stuff is. I don't know why it is that way, but you get your reports, comb through line by line, go back over it again, line by line, watch my video, and you will see that this stuff will start, uh, just like it just appears to you, and you're like, this is what he, I didn't even see this that time, but this is 100% inaccurate with this line of data. And then it's gonna be inaccurate with another line of data. And then what you do is you craft your dispute based off of that information. You did not get, in this example, you did not have $13,000 line of credit with them. You did not. Regardless what they come back with and say, well, it was fees and all, but that does not matter when it goes to the data on your credit report because it is unfairly representing you as having $13,000 high credit limit. When they say that, they're making it like you utilized $13,000 in credit when you did not. I know I'm saying it over and over again, but this is very, very important. And you can utilize that same strategy for every piece of information on your credit reports. Now, let me uh, make something clear before you think about doing this. Uh, this is a mistake that a lot of people make. Just because TransUnion has something on there one way 
and Equifax has it on there another way. You cannot say, well, TransUnion, Equifax had it this way and you need to have it that way or you need to take it off because uh, Equifax took it off or Experian took it off. They don't care about that at all. They do not care about that at all. So when you're dealing with these bureaus, you deal with that bureau, with that information, with your dispute, and you go to the other one, and you're gonna, it's gonna take work, and it might come off of one, two, and be on three, and it takes a lot of work to get it off that third one. But that's, you put in that work. You put in that work, and I just showed you how to do it with the original creditor. Now let's deal with how to get it off the original creditor if they sell it to a debt collection company. So now, this is actually stated in the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. It's actually stated in the Metro 2 uh, uh, software that is uploaded by the furnishers, which is in the companies that put information on your credit reports. Account status code five, transferred or obsolete account. Now, when you're disputing, you don't need to say, code five i'm just letting you know that it really does exist now if you ever had an account let's just say that you had a mortgage or you refinance something what do they usually place on there or not usually what will they place on there they will either say that the account was transferred or sold transferred or sold so we're gonna let's keep this right here transferred or sold is what they would put on there. So if the collection agency purchased the credit card debt, if the credit card company sold a debt, let's just say it was sold to another credit card company, the credit card company A uh, wanted to relieve itself of certain portfolios and they sold it to another credit card company uh, for less than what the face value was on there. Credit card, the credit card company who bought it said, hey, we're gonna buy it for less and we're gonna make our money back over time with payments, we're good with it. They're gonna put on there that it was sold or transferred. That, that's, that is, you're gonna see that on your credit reports. That is another line, line on there that you can challenge. Because yes, technically transferred, but it's really sold. And if they sell it to, this is why they hide it with these words. Because if it's sold to a debt collector, what do you think they have to put on there? Sold. And they, if they sell something, you don't sell something without getting paid. How can you sell something to somebody, to a company, without getting paid? The way that they get away with it is they'll just put transferred. Or they'll put collect, uh, you know, something about a collector on there or whatever they, they put. But what they're putting on there is not 100% accurate when it comes to data. See, we're not talking about credit, so to speak. We're talking about data, lines of data, information about you, information about the account. So if they sell that account to a debt collector, what is the first thing that you could actually challenge on there? Is that the account becomes obsolete. This is the code. This is the actual code, account status code, 05, transferred or obsolete. But what they do with this code is that they always focus on this right here. They always focus on either transferred or sold. They never focus on obsolete. If you've ever called the credit repair shop and talked with someone, one of my reps, this is probably one of the, the most used words that we use. And a lot of people would wonder, they're like, well, why do you say obsolete with the account? Because it's written into the code. It's written into the code. If you tell them, I know that this account is obsolete, I know 100% of this obsolete, and I based that op that that account being obsolete because the uh, the original creditor was paid by the collector. The original creditor accepted less. The original creditor placed this information on there. They're telling the bureau what they did with it, 
and they're hoping that the Bureau does that. Well, they're not hoping. They're not hoping. By law, if you don't do nothing, it can sit there seven years. So they're not hoping. They're just they're following the rules. Let's so let's let's not put them into a category. They're following the rules because if they uh, put the information on there, you know, it would, even if they say that it was sold to a debt collector, uh, they still had that seven year rule. So they're not breaking any rules. They're not they're not trying to hide nothing. But what they are not telling people, which is not their job to tell you, it's. Pete, it's my job to tell you is that you have rights to have that information 100% accurately reported. So at a minimum, at a minimum, and this is what we do at the credit repair shop, at a minimum, they would put paid for less because they accepted less that was, than was owed. Again, if we go back, if we go back, let's think logically, if we go back, and if you were to accept a payment, someone owed you $100 and you took $50 from them, the next day you can't go back and say, well, I changed my mind. I want to get $100 instead of that $50. And you, the person would be like, You're, you, it, it's over, right? It's, it's over. You took the money. You, got, you took less. You knew that I, I wasn't going to pay you the full amount, and you accepted less. And yesterday you said that, it, you know, we were good. And now you're trying to say that we're not good. This is what they do to people with the credit reports, is they say, well, we we took that, you know, we took that payment. If, if they thinking that it's about money, and they're, see, that, that, but that come, come, to, come to mind. I got so much stuff that runs through my mind with, with this stuff when I when I go through it. If you think about it, if you think about it, they're, they're, they make you focus on the money when they're really, at this point, only focusing on the data. And it proves my point. It proves my point 100%. It's like this. Uh, let, me, let me give you an analogy. This is like that girlfriend-boyfriend type deal. When the whole thing is over, girlfriend-boyfriend splits up. It's the, you know, the relationship is over. But they have that dog. They have the dog. And the boyfriend really didn't like the dog anyway. But the boyfriend say says, I want the dog. Even though he didn't want, didn't never want the dog, he wants the dog. So this the, situ the situation with this is like that girlfriend boyfriend type deal. I can't do anything else to hurt you. I sold the debt. I can't do nothing else to hurt you other than leaving that information on your credit report for seven years. And let me tell you something that I've learned being in this business for a number of years is that these companies, these companies actually I think that they're two-faced because we've had clients where we were able to clean up their situation, either where we were able to make a deal for less directly with the original creditor, or this process here was done. And guess what? After this process was done, when we made deals with the original creditor, we get we, uh, they sent us a letter for our client and they said after this settlement after 30 to 45 days your client can get accepted for another credit card they said that they will get accepted for another credit card or that they could apply for one like they were saying hey come back we you just messed up you just got uh we just resolved it you know got this resolution everybody's happy even though we took less and you can come back over and uh and do business with us and oh yeah we're gonna change the status on that on your credit reports and even when this information is removed where they the, the debt collection company bought it and we're just dealing with getting the information off of the original creditors uh getting the original creditors information taken off these clients were able to go and get credit with those companies because they're in the business 
of making money. And the only way that it can make money is to take risk on giving money out to people. That's just the only way that they could do it. So please like this video. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, so you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. That's the way that we repair credit. That it, you know, We don't promise overnight success. We're gonna work hard. We promise working hard. We're, we promise following through. We promise to call you back we promise to answer our phone. We promise to answer our emails. That's what we do. We can't promise the outcome of a third party company that we don't, that that's not ours, but we can promise that we will keep going at what needs to be done to make sure that the information on your credit report is 100% accurate. And if it gets to a point to where you need to make settlements, we will guide you through that process. The next thing is if you don't have your credit reports in, in all three scores, I need you to get those so you can at least have all the information about what's going on with your credit reports. I, when, when I speak to people or, I, or I, uh, when we're live chatting and we ask people, what, do you know what's on your credit reports? And they say no. And they say no. And it's like, how can you get to first base if you don't even, you're not even ready to even swing at the ball? Swinging at the ball is having all the information, everything about you. This is about you. Like, I think that sometimes people think you just go get your credit reports. This is what people have about you. So it's more than just the word credit reports. This is your data, the way it's being reported about you. It's like you could have a bad, you know how people say uh, they talking behind your back? Well, you might wanna go see what people are saying. It doesn't matter what they say because you know who you are, but you need to go see, you know, hey, you know, why are you saying this about me? That's what your credit reports are to you. And if you have debt collectors coming after you early in the game, grab my three pack of letters, statute of limitations, cease and desist collection activities letter and debt validation letter. You use the one that's appropriate for your situation. The instructions are on there. And I do ask for a donation. It helps me monetize my time here on the channel. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com.